Hello and welcome. Okay, should I start by singing? Wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I am so excited. This is the last Sunday in this amazing, wonderful, you know, some would say chaotic, on imagined you know year 2020 there was so much expectation for this year housing for all by 2020 everybody looked up to 2020 as the magical year so many things would happen all our sorrows would fly away suddenly things would become great but 2020 came on his own you know like when you have a child and you say that child is on his own the child came on its own. That was how 2020 came for. For all of us. Without respect for tribe, color, nation, city, none. It came with its own package for everyone. But you know what? I am super grateful to God. Super excited that you and I are alive today. We're grateful to God. And so many people can't wait for 2020 to go. And let's see what 2021 has in store for us. But the exciting thing is that we are all very hopeful. So I want to welcome you on the last edition of the Transformation of Parenting Show for this year 2020. We have quite a lot of things lined up for 2021 new face new set new color more issues to talk about more skills and strategy to share with you on how you are able to parent your children and also be in health that is my desire for every one of us so if this is your first time of watching this show the transformation of parenting show is all about adding value to the family all about mirroring the issues that we are facing showcasing them and try to take away the myth that is placed in some of this whole idea of parenting children in the 21st century so we're here to help you because we've been through it and we have experts who know what to do who understand your child unfortunately much more than you do but we're here not to scold you for not doing it, but to help you and to support you, to build the structure that you need to be able to have, uh, raise an awesome child and have a peaceful family. Like I say, parent is not about now, it's about your tomorrow. Because the way you parent today will determine how the children will respond and react to you tomorrow. So my prayer for every one of us, is that as we come to the end of this year we're going to take uh we'll have a review of what has happened how what, what have i achieved how has the transformational parenting show and many coaches all over the world how have they impacted me how have, how have i absorbed the things that have been taught and how have i applied them because learning and hearing is one thing application is another thing and what is the feedback and the results can you measure it are you seeing changes in your children are you seeing changes in yourself because the whole idea is is the transformation is about renewing your mindset have you been able to change from your default the way you were raised that has not worked <laughs> have you been able to see change from there retune your mind you know and say okay let me come into the present day and see how i can take some of my experiences and blend it you know align it with the children of these days and get a good uh, result so please take time out and really do a recap do an appraisal of yourself you understand how much have i grown on this show we talk about raising children with a growth mindsets a, a mindset of i want to advance and i want my children to advance gone are those days where you learn alone as a parent and you're not adding value to your children 
But these days, we learn together. Because these kids are so smart. You think you know, you might just be in a slow lane. Why they've gone so far. But, we can do it. And whatever we do as a family, we correct the heels that we have in society today. So once more welcome. If you're just joining us, my name is Mute Olori, your parenting coach. I'll take a short break. When I come back, we'll be meeting my guests. And together we will look at what are those things we need to correct if we must do it right in 2021. Especially for us as mothers, when so many news and things happening, you know, around us. How do we protect ourselves as women? So that we can be alive to enjoy the labor of our hands. Please don't go away. Enjoy the song. And when I come back, you will be meeting my guests. Welcome on the show. Yes, welcome back to the Transformational Parenting Show and my name is Mute Olori, your parenting coach. Alright, so today we are going to be looking at what should we do differently, you know, in preparation for 2021. I'm really very excited. But first of all, I will always talk about being grateful. Gratitude, having an attitude of gratitude will really help you to appreciate not only what god has done for you for the whole year but to appreciate every member of your family because i discovered that a lot of us we don't know how to say thank you well done all right so please part of the things you must do in the remaining days of this year to prepare you for next year is have an attitude of gratitude so my guest in the house today she's the md of PRI Global Ventures Limited, a passionate social impact entrepreneur. She's also the chief formulator at uh, Sila Organic, a registered trademark brand that deals in adding value to share butter value chain and we're not talking share butter today you know uh, she's married with children and i call her my town colleagues please join me to welcome priscilla apasi so how are you i'm very well thank you happy to be here <laughs> i'm happy to have, to have you you i have been chasing this woman oh my god i thought she finally said she was going to come today the last <laughs> Sunday of 2020, I'm like, oh my right. God, 2021 is going to be sunshine. Yes, it's going Thank to be. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Glad to be here. So you've been doing a lot of amazing work, working with women. Yeah. Um, the first time I knew you was all about share butter. You've done quite a lot of things out of it. The things I couldn't even imagine right. could come out of it. You know, but you are more of impacting, job, more than... Uh, Oh, I'm doing this for business. I'm doing this for trade. I found that you're, you're, you're more concerned about wanting to empower these women so they can put food on the table, so that they can be support to the women. You know, how has it been all these years? Um, well, it's, it's something naturally I seem to um, propel towards women and children. I don't know how. I just enjoy it. Whether the woman is in uh, 
an MD in a plush office or she sits at the marketplace or she's in the village is something I love to do. I love to talk to the woman, see what she's about, what's her challenges. I love to get into that because I don't know, I just seem to be drawn to mm. that woman thing. <laughs> <laughs> about whether yeah. we like it or not they are they are a formidable force indeed when it comes indeed. to raising a generation yes. that impact the society yes indeed so that's why yeah. you call yourself a social impact entrepreneur yes because i can go into a market i'm there to buy things and i find a woman selling something and she has her baby on her back i want to know why is she doing it so how long is she going to continue? Because in doing social impact, when it comes to women, can we sustain it? Even if you work in an organization, you need to have the future of sustainability. Can you continue it in the next two, three months? So I start asking questions. Why are you doing what you're doing with your baby? How long do you plan to come out here and do this with your baby? And if you're going to continue to do this with this child, do you, have, do you have a plan to continue for that, for the long haul? You know, so I ask all those questions and I know if I look at myself as an example, I was in the bank for eight years before, um, well, marriage happened. <laughs> and so you, you put the child first. It's a woman's instinct. Even some of us, yes, we're independent, but you always think of your child's future in everything you do, whether you want to be a globetrotting CEO or a hustling entrepreneur your child comes first as your motivating factor mm -hmm. so those are some of the things that i now thought oh why not if i have to work in a village it shouldn't be just for profit i should impact the women for tomorrow because i'm trying to impact my myself mm -hmm. at the same time for tomorrow mm -hmm. so amazing mm -hmm. and uh, i'm really <laughs> very proud to say that you are in the right path and you're doing a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much thank and I, I guess that's what we share that's why that passion brought us Indeed. together <laughs> no but now you you said you see we you can't talk about the future if you don't deal with the present right and try to look at the past you know that determines where you are being and where you want to go that's right so that brings me to the question of before we talk about 20 preparing for 2021 do you think that women or parents are actually putting structures in place like you said you meet a woman and you say what are your plans mm -hmm. from what you expect do you think we really have plans are we very intentional when it comes to parenting um you know the thing is especially for africa as parents we 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 follow this is the way our parent taught us but over time meeting people I found that it wasn't an African thing. I used to think, okay, because my parents beat me, so I'll beat my own child. But over time, you know, the exposure of meeting other people from other cultures, other countries, I found that, no, it's not. I met, uh, uh, there's this Chinese um, gentleman that was beating his child so much. The lady is a YouTuber now. So she got to that point of her program, she wanted to bring her daddy on to find out why was he beating her so much? I think she had this trauma thing because of the abuse from the parent, right? But the parent, when, when they were interviewing the parent, the, the parent didn't see anything wrong with him beating the child. Maybe to him, he feel that is the best way to correct and, and, the child. And because of the beating, she's not no, she, she yes. Yeah. So every, every step of the child's life, she's like, um, she's um, about 30 now. But you see, that thing followed her. She wants her father to apologize to her. Do you know till that program finished, this man refused. He cried. They both cried. He said that that is how he grew up. That thing touched me as a parent. The child is trying to understand the parent. The parent is trying to understand the child's rebellious ways. But there, there's, a, there's a block. The father is refusing to apologize. The child is a 21st century child mm. and insisting that a 1960-something, 1950-something year um, daddy should apologize. It's unheard of in some homes. And the old man said, no, 
that that's how he knows that he doesn't even understand why he's on this show why his daughter is doing that to him mm. so most time you see us as parents it's not like our parents got it wrong is the um from where they are coming from so yes we'll change it going forward you know before they used to um if you're napkining a child you use cloth right and those crazy huge pins mm. on the side and then somebody thought let's put cotton wool in gauze come on and before you know it we have um diaper okay. so like that we we progress where you find the parent progressing now we have what we call millennials generation mm. x we need to be able to to see that their thinking is lightening speed compared to our own so we need to be able to focus on how the whirlwind of how the children think what they anticipate what they know should happen to them from us as custodians mm. as parents to them so we shouldn't just come with any kind of idea and think the child should just <laughs> take it you can't tell the child who wants to be a cameraman to be a a doctor mm. now they won't do it in fact the one i'm dealing with is yeah. the fact that you're asking something to be done and i'm expecting the person to run and go do it <laughs> and you don't think i'm taking this time and i'm saying young man he say relax i said can you tell me to relax <laughs> i'm i'm going for time yeah. you you get to get this he said relax i'll yeah. get it done but you're not moving the way i want to so we can't really use our no thought our nature our, to 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 actually direct them yes so what, what do we need to start doing because it's important if we are going to move ahead that's right it's a two-way street the child you're thinking the child is slow but it's actually if he gets to that chore before you blink you will be the same person to act are you sure you did it right yeah it's a two-way street it's like a, it's an expressway there's one side here and there's one side here the child is on this side the parent is on this side you give a child a chore for pity six don't force it <laughs> because we force it a lot because it works even yes we force it mm. a lot we come from a background of parents forcing mm. so we continue so the child now this child can't be like us they are from us yes but they can't be like us because they come into a different century entirely their mindset their way of thinking what they understand it doesn't throw away what we know that is why we are there as a guide it doesn't they understand that mm, as well that, that, but that's where we miss it yes because mm -hmm. we always want to enforce yeah. enforce the fact that i'm your parent yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I see. I am. Um, why do I have to do this? And they ask right. you questions. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a generation of questions. Yeah, that's why. Right. Uh -huh. And then you go because I am your mother. That's right. Because I am your <laughs> father. Because I said it. You know, and at a, a, a forum, I I try to make the parents understand that they know. Yeah. They and do. I wonder why are you enforcing it. Why are you repeating it? Why are you making it such a big deal? Mm -hmm. But I also believe that probably it's a point where you're missing it or you're struggling and mm -hmm. you think you have failed yes now when parents are faced with such i, I don't want to use words opposition from um what they think is right or what they believe should be mm -hmm. what should we begin to do differently you know to be able to now instead of being confrontational mm -hmm. instead of being demanding because we don't seem to get any results when we use this strategy mm -hmm. so what do we need to start to work differently um we come at par with the child we come at par to the point that the child knows that you give that sense of authority you know because the current situation of children right now is they don't want to be told what to do mm. now if you must tell somebody it's like being in an office you're supposed to write a report you don't go doing the same because all of us in office we are children 
<laughs> if you look at it, if you look at it, right? And if this person is supposed to make a report, you tell him, we have report Tuesday, right? So you send in your report at 10. You know there is definitely one person that won't send that report at mm -hmm. 10, right? But you don't go behaving, shouting on the person. You know that work won't get done. At the end of the day, you find that you sent other reports without that person's mm -hmm. report. And without his report, there is no cohesion, right? So it's the same thing with the children. You tell a child, get this thing done, and you pass that way. The child hasn't done it. Like for me, there are so many ways I can deal with my kids. The child hasn't done it. Oh, we love Netflix in my house. We love Netflix. Now, because each we have different, um, there's that of my husband, there's that of mine, and the kids have their own. The way Netflix did it for three of those kids, right? So now, they know they want to watch a certain program. And I told you, do this, do that. You haven't done it. And you have the audacity to ask for Netflix. You know you ain't going to have. Mm. So it's very simple. Okay, well, no Netflix, Netflix now because <laughs> we see you at the point of your need. Yes. <laughs> so you see, the child now checks it. Ah, it's going to miss this thing. So let me. That's all my. So a friend of mine got. See, there's this raining thing. PS5. Mm -hmm. I don't like that program, but a lot of children love it. She told the boy. I I forgot what she told the boy to do. So he wanted PS5 for as a Christmas gift. She bought the PS5, no doubt. And then the boy was just, you know, going around the chore. So she told him it was yesterday was 26th mm. year, so it was a gifting day. No PS5. That boy cried. She said she has never seen a child cry mm. so much. He cried. He got the chore done. I can't, don't know why I can't remember what it was. He got it done, so she took the PS something and hid it under the bed. He went to bed. He didn't check under the bed. So she now came into the room at some point during the night and... Placed it. Placed, no, she placed them, um, I think, a sleeper. Okay. So she, the morning, today, she was asking of her sleeper. The boy said, no, he hasn't seen it. Now I said, ah, you should check. Oh, you know, you're the just moody yeah? the whole of today. You should check on that debate. I think she came into the room to do something. She must have left it. And he was still angry that no peer. So when he entered the room to check on because you can see that he knows that his mother is serious. Oh my god, PS five. He missed it. Mm. So he went and he saw the thing. He brought it out. He saw the slipper. He brought it out. He now sat down. He sat down, hugged it and was crying. So she walked into the room and saw the boy crying. And then the boy now said, I'm sorry, mommy. I'm sorry, mommy. He, that was all he was saying. Mm. You see, because sometimes there are so many ways to... <laughs> I saw on the internet a lady said, doing time out is not effective. Not like like it's not the mental. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are so many ways we can meet them halfway without forcing or without, like me, quickly raising the hand towards the child. There are so many things because there are, there are so millennial and Gen X that you take out that thing that works their mind to huge capacity, like Jim Quick will say, mm -hmm. that they will want to do what you tell them to do. So it's all about understanding them. Yes. But we need to be patient yes. to we study and know what skill to apply. That's right. That will work. Yes. <laughs> wow. I'm sure that many of us can relate to what we are talking about. And that's the truth. Yeah. These children, if you don't know what to do, wow, they can send you crazy. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are times I say, boy, I have chosen to have peace. I've chosen not to scream. And you're yeah. not going to change it. Because I made a deliberate decision. I made a choice that I'm not going to do certain things. I'm not going to shout. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to jeopardize my health because I'm raising children. Oh, yeah. And also, I am not going to raise children that will have no self-esteem, that will not be mm. able to stand up for themselves, mm -hmm. that will develop negative um, self-image and have no confidence because I have this, of my style of parenting. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? 
and what will you begin to do differently we'll take a short break it's still the festive season a time of celebration so enjoy this music mm -hmm. uh, and when we come back we'll be looking at 2021 and what we can do differently is still the transformational parenting show your show where we talk about parenting we talk we're interested in your well-being as a parent and of course the development and growth of your child and so that's why we take time to organize a lot of workshops seminars zoom meetings training centers for young people empowering them with leadership skills these days skills rule the world so what skills are you developing in your child? How are you helping them? So these are the things that we do as um, a network. So we have our Facebook um, platform, which is the Transformation Parenting Network on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram, T Parenting, and that's on Instagram. And you can also follow us on our WhatsApp page on 080-2611-5059. 08026115059 to be a part of the parenting support group where we offer you um, the support that you need to be able to parent whether you like it or not you need support God at those days where you want to do it alone you just kill yourself but you need support where you find out that you're not in it alone you know there are many that are struggling but there are many of us that have been able to know you know what to do like i say you are just learning each child you parent is a new thing you just learn so you will have to learn and learn we learn in this parenting journey it is a journey that never ends don't forget after you're done with the children the grandchildren are there we see that's the most rewarding part and i want i know you will want to look forward to that so on the show today we are really mirroring those things that we're not doing right or those things that we need to work on those things that we need to increase in case we are, are doing it and then i find out that when you know one strategy the children will change another strategy so my guest in the house she's the md of pri global ventures limited a passionate social impact entrepreneur and she's also the chief formulator of sila organic organics a registered trademark brand that deals in adding value to share butter value chain she's married with children and she's very passionate also about women and children together we'll be looking at what are those things we're not doing right and how can we do right and it's been um, a good thing that you know sherry as if you, you i'm sure some of my viewers will say you have gone into the mind of the children as if you you, you are in their home mirroring exactly what is happening and you mentioned that if we need to uh parent without um opposition without crisis without um rebellion for our children we must learn to meet them at a particular place meet them not by screaming but by um strategically enforcing certain values you know, in a subtle way, but very effective. All right. So now, if we don't go this lane, what effect does it have on us, on our children, and parenting generally? The effects are normally very, um, it's very damaging, right? But let me give another example. A friend of mine came to my house two days ago. And she's a single mother, and I told her, babe, take the child to the grandparent so that you can check yourself. How do you want to go about this coming year? Mm. You know? Because she keep um, complaining how 
motherhood is tough for her, there's work, she thinks of the daughter, how to take care of her. I said, send that to the grandparent. Maybe I was looking at my own parent. When my elder sister had some issues, my parent took care of the child and said, girl, you go set yourself up, get onto your job and, and stabilize yourself. When you're stable, you can't pick the child. Mm. So maybe I had that thinking to advise her to do the same. And then the lady said, her mother is not present. Mm. And I said, how is her grandbaby? She'll be happy to have her. She said, no, if she keeps the child there, the child might have that she was being molested by her cousin and her mommy was in the house and didn't know. When she told the mother, the mother called her a witch and that she's lying. And this is a 38 year old lady. Do you know how long ago that was? And it has followed her, she's had her own baby. Mm. She's afraid to leave the child where the child she doesn't want the child to have that same issue hmm. that followed her growing up so now she's now trying to protect the child from what happened to her years before now as parent you can see that okay yes she's on the path but she's having some kind of mental breakdown because the because to tell the truth as a parent hmm. it is the most taxing job in the whole world it is because I would prefer you give me a a nine to five job than to be a parent because in nine to five you can compartmentalize but when you come to parenting even if it's one child you can't mm. because the all of a sudden there are so many things you have to do for one child not to talk of if you have four like I have is like running an army <laughs> yes, if you ask any general how they run it, setting battalion is the craziest thing. It's just that because the army comes with iron hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's the same thing with your kid. You're trying to you compartmentalize, but you see that there's an opening here. You try to close. You're constantly on your toes. Mm -hmm. Your brain bots are on the ready because you don't know. So you see, if we don't get it right, we find kids grow to be damaged goods sorry to use the word damage good but kids grow to to have that problematic issue of my parents did never trusted me my parents told me i was a liar when i was telling them the truth mm -hmm. what was mm -hmm. going on like when i picked my kids first thing i asked what happened in school i need to know from the time i dropped you you washed your hand entered the school you sat at your table your table and um, your seats mate what did you just how was class, how was the teaching, down to um, when they go to the bathroom. Mm. And I'll say, okay, so when you go to the bathroom, who did you meet at the bathroom? Mm. Yes, I'm the weird like that. Okay, did you wash your hands? So as you were walking out the door, who did you meet walking in? When you were walking in, who else was walking in just before you took the turn? So you're, you're tr there's something that you're fishing for. Yes, I want to hear everything. Because sometimes the children, if you notice, they hardly tell you anything. Mm. They want you to ask the question. Now, before we do try, I want to ask questions. Our parents never had the time to listen. But if you notice, these children now, they want you to ask the question. They don't give it to you for free. You ask the question, mm. how did it go? How was an audition you went for? How was the uh, poetry class? Or did you make new friends? And then you start hearing stories like, I mean, stories beyond, like my six-year-old can talk of his friend Abube. He told me one time that, that one of his friends, Abube, was trying to mess with the proprietors of the school. And I was like, this child is six. <laughs> the sentence yeah. that Abube was trying to mess with uh, the, the proprietors of the school. And I'm like, eh? six -o. You know, you can see that even their vocabulary, you never had that kind yeah, of yeah, vocabulary. Yeah. We, 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 we we were brought up you know slightly timid but these are children that can look at you straight in the eye and tell you mommy you're wrong straight in the eye without blinking that maybe a stony stick will come flying or a slipper will come flying yes they don't tell you as it is i had um a bit of um uh, i was under the weather three weeks ago 
And my six years old walked into the room and told me and did that. I said, oh, mommy, you're running a temp. I have never used that <laughs> one before. <laughs> and then he took a Lego piece and placed it here that I will get better now. You know, you look at that thing, you know that, that situation, you know that there is something about this child. Let's expand it mm. and see what happens. So when the child is giving you gist, you now want to listen and hear to the very end of that gist. Because there will be an underlining thing that the child will see. So now if we're not able to get into the child to know, especially as the, um, when they become teenagers, mm. from 12, you know, the child is having funny spots and cannot understand. He's angry with the younger ones because maybe he had a slight headache because there's a pimple mm. coming up tomorrow. He doesn't know there's a pimple coming up tomorrow, but you know. Mm. Why not tell your child, you know, this is why my daughter had the same issue. She was just being mean to the younger ones. I didn't get it. <laughs> so then the next day and the six years out, uh, that this, that uh, teenager is in a period. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So I now understood. The next day, I went to our room and I said, okay, you know, when you tell them nicely to leave the room, if you don't want to be bothered, but you shouldn't be shouting on your younger ones. You know, did you hear what she has said? She now said, yes, she heard because she was not shy that he told me. Mm -hmm. She didn't even want me to know mm -hmm. that that the the thing had come. You know, so but if we're able to to get things out of them. It helps mentally, even as an adult. If you're able to tell the right person your problem, mm. it eases a lot of things. Not to talk of a child. The child normally will feel that it's carrying the weight of the world. Yeah! I think it's a wonder what, what problem are you solving? Yes, it doesn't, are you it, paying school fees? They don't, are you paying <laughs> they don't want to know, but they feel like they're carrying the weight of the world. And if you're able to talk to your child, be it male or the female child, you will be shocked what comes out from them. And then you will now be able to, because now it's a managing, mm. you need to now start managing this situation. Because for your child to be able to come home and tell you about either a boyfriend, because they have crushes. Mm. A six-year-old has crush. I didn't have crush as a six-year-old. You, you know? In fact, I tell my son sometimes, I said, when I was growing up, the thought of a Bilala or somebody yelling at you is enough for you to, you know, to get scared or check out of bed. You know, this one, we are coming to wake you up. Oh, that, that waking, waking them up. <laughs> when I was growing up. Intentionally learn to, I call waking them up like a, a century. When I was growing up, you don't, my mom don't want to come, you just hear there's a signal. Oh. The, the wall, she just hit the wall. Oh. Three times. You wake up. Yeah. You can imagine <laughs> You will jump up. Something will just jack you and you will wake up. I mean, sometimes, oh, anyway, but now we are here. But something you mentioned, and I think a lot of is is missing a lot of parenting, and that's the patience. Yes. Patience to to find out things. Patience to listen when you ask a question, because mm -hmm. you asked, "How was your day?" Yeah. They're ready to talk. They make one sentence. Oh, okay, you're busy doing something else. Mm -hmm. You're on your phone. You have a meeting. You have so many things distracting you. Mm -hmm. Because they want to check if you are really ready to listen. Right. right. So they push their necessary in front. Mm -hmm. And the way you respond to that necessary, the time you will go to the deep That's right. to tell you. Yeah. So when you find your child say to you, don't worry, means you have succeeded in shutting that child down mm -hmm. with your response. And then they go online and go to other things to find and then we've also found that a lot of people just are just also accuse children yes unfortunately unfortunately and it's it's so rampant it's so rampant i don't know why if a child tells you yes i know that we've had cases where you see a child will tell you oh mommy i didn't do it 
learn body language. Just learn body language. It's very simple. Even an adult, if you look at an adult deep, no matter how um conk you say he is in line, you will know his line. Just look him in the eye straight. You see and know his line. The eye blinks. You know that white part, the people it needs to be steady if you're looking at me. But if you start shaking, he's lying. The body language, you see, it moves one feet to one side. This is real because <laughs> I mean to deal with children, so I don't I don't want to make mistakes. Because I follow scripture to the T where God says that I'm a custodian of these children and if anything goes wrong with them, you be held responsible. I do not want to be held responsible for messing up a child. I do not want to be. So well, I, and I also, I explained it to my children. I don't want to miss heaven, so please don't make me miss it, mm. you know. So you, I explained it to the child that, to just tell me the truth, even if you get a spanking. The moment you tell me the truth, I feel, okay, so one down, mm. so we can deal with it. Let's let it not happen again. But you see, as parents, the first reaction, the time won't make you think mm. that the next time this child will tell you mm. and don't forget this is small though. this is small by the child that by the time the child is 20 there's a different there's a brand new attitude mm. every time there's a there's a brand new formation with the child every time just like when they were babies this week yes. they change they sleep in the right. day the next two days yes. so as they, they, as they keep growing they keep each year each exactly. birthday you celebrate they are ready to observe something uh -huh. different because it's just it's a growth process and that's why we say on transformation of parenting we are parenting raising children with a growth mindset right. Know they will grow. Be ready to grow with them. Don't stay at one point and be doing chief manipulator. Yeah, it, it will work. It will work. That's your analog. It will not work. My locomotive will not work. We 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 are digital. We've gone with that. Yeah. And the children will just be looking at you and like oh, yeah. <laughs> you think you know. Yeah. They make you. They just tell you what you need to know. So way forward. Yes. Yeah. In the remaining days, because I, I still believe that no matter what, we can still set a foundation right. um, to get things right. No matter, you know, how many days left, mm -hmm. 20, 21, for some people, they, they just want a lot of things to pass away, a lot of things to go, so that, you know, we're hopeful. The remaining days, now, we, for those of us who have children in the wedding house, because that's a whole your ball game of its own but i believe that we'll be able to do something like you said it's important we get them to talk to us and we get to get to the points where we meet them so we'll be able to correct we'll be able to connect yeah. we'll be able to help and communicate better so what should we begin to do in the many parts of this year few days remaining that will add value to our children and add value to our families and we help them when they get back to school. The first thing I normally as a family is to have a goal. What's the goal do you have as a family? In my family we have we say we are transforming families, right? That's our goal. So we expect that each child in that house should see that if you go to a house and something is wrong with this child you should be able to talk to the child and be able to get out what makes the child to behave a certain way or how it's feeling in that house. My kids can go into any house and then when we get back into the car, the child will say, no, this one was like that, this one was that, and that. okay. Mm. Okay. So it's like that. You, the, the family should have a goal. You know, it, it sounds like it's, a, it's business. No, it's not. What is your goal as a family? There's a, I have some family friends in the U.S. Their goal is that this house, there must be happiness at all times. Mm. If you're pissed, find somewhere, roll it, and bring happiness. Mm. That's their goal. And it works. They, they're sibling fighting, yes, but they remember that thing. The goal in this house is to be happy. So try to make ourselves happy. 
come what may. So as families, there have to be a goal. What do you want as a family? Mm -hmm. Father, mother, children. Once you're able to have that, you'll be able to, you know, accommodate any other thing. Whether you have the goal that let love always prevail, whether you have um, let respect, just find a goal that the family can use. Yes, a few days to 2021. 2020 has been one very hectic mm. kind of year, but life must go on. Life must definitely go on. So as a family, let's walk into the new year. Setting a goal is not a resolution. Is a goal that as a family, whether the, the family member, maybe the head of the house has traveled or the mother has traveled or the children are in boarding school or university, whether abroad or in other places, wherever you are, remember the goal of our family because you represent the family in the school, in the board meeting, in the market. Remember that goal so that at the end of the day, when we come together, we know that this goal worked for us. We can continue it to the next year. Wow, Priscilla Atasi was a social uh, impact entrepreneur, and I'm, I'm sure she's added a lot of impact to us today. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us, and thank you for being on the show today. Yay! <laughs> So we are ending this program on uh, uh, 2020 on a beautiful note. And my prayer is we'll be able to get it right. We'll be able to get it right. Some of you watching will say, how do I set goals? How do, what, what are goals? What are values? What should I do? Well, send us an email on transformationalparenting at gmail.com. Send us an email on transformationalparenting at gmail.com. Do all you can to reach us, even by WhatsApp. Or go on Facebook, Transformational Parenting Network. Look for us. Find us. You don't have to go this alone. This is an information age. So information is key. Knowledge is power. And we're ready to help you. So take advantage of everything we're offering. And if you need the experts, we will help you so we have programs coming up go on our platform look at what it is that we have and key in so that you don't have to struggle on this parenting journey so my name is Mutia Lori. on this note i want to wish you a prosperous 2021 because i'll be seeing you on the other side yes our next program will be with you on the other side and i wish you all the well all the best and um, we're going to replay you this last song which says weather is just three days to go there's still opportunity to grab the remaining that this year holds for us and to make it right in your parenting set a good precedent put the structure in place set the foundation all you need is the thoughts once it's there gather the family and let's see how we can start this rolling 2021 it's going to be a better year so thank you for ending this year with me and see you on the other side 2021 god bless you everyone bye bye good evening ladies and gentlemen my name is normalos and tonight we're going to be presenting one of nigeria's